Alright guys, welcome to RC Mojo. It's trailer again this week and we start at step 20. We'll need a big plastic sheet with the flat ends. It's the one that ends up being the roof of the box. 10 of the steel angled bits and 10 M2 by 6s The angled bits are the same as the ones we fitted in the last video and the steel angles sit on the plastic with one of the M2 screws to hold it all together. So rather than repeat, here's the roof with all its bits fitted. They're all a little bit loose at the moment, so they can find their own position by themselves. And now the fun bit, step 21. There's lots of bits that won't quite line up without some jiggling here, so take your time and make sure everything's lined up. All we need for this one, other than the panels, are 20 M2x6s. Starting with the floor panel we put together last time, we slot in one of the side panels, they're the same end to end and top to bottom, so they will fit in any way round. So choose the side with the nicest finish for the outside. The screw should go straight through to the steel angled bits and smoothly screw in. If they don't, get an eye in line with the holes and check. Fit all of the screws along the floor panel, leaving them slightly loose and repeat for the other side. Now, because I've got a white box to film in and the panels are white too, they might be a little bit hard to see but they are both there. Roof next. It should sit on the top with the side panels neatly slotting between the aluminium angle and the steel angles, with the M2 screws to hold it all together. In reality though, because it's all a bit floppy, you have to get in there and carefully line everything up, making sure each one is nicely seated one by one. And inevitably, at least one of them will pop out while you're working on another. Keep going though, and after a bit of fiddling around, we have most of the box complete. You can even see the reflection of all the junk I keep just out of shot. Lovely. Okay, step 22, fitting the end panels. And there's not much to this one, just 8 M2x10s. The current rather floppy box, and the end panels we made last time. The panels simply slot in at the ends. They might need a few light taps to get everything to fall into position. The easiest way to make sure is if you look at the screw holes and jiggle it around until it all lines up. To fit the bottom screws I had to lift the end up a little bit so I could get the screwdriver in. Hanging over the edge of a table might be easier, just watch out for all the screw heads along the bottom making a mess of your coffee table. The screws go into captured nylon nuts so there's no worries about stripping them. Same goes for the door end too. Now's the time to go round all the other screws and nip them up. Just remember that the ones that go into the steel angles aren't the strongest, so don't go mad with the torque. Step 23. Attaching the chassis to the box. But before we get too far into that, there's another little widget to assemble. We need a 5mm ball end and plastic part C7. The ball end gets screwed into the hole with the raised surround. It doesn't need to be all that tight, just nicely seated. The part sits in part of the leg retract mechanism, and pushes on some bell cranks. It's not a good one to forget, as there would be quite a lot to take apart to fit it. The chassis can go on now. It needs 10 M3x10s from the pot, and not much else. C7 goes up inside the little box. You can keep hold of the ball end that goes through a slot while lowering it down onto the chassis. And you can just about see the ball end sticking up. Start with one of the screws towards the front of the chassis and do it up so there's still a little bit of a gap under the screw head. Now we can pivot the chassis on that single screw and line up the holes at the back of the chassis and install one. And again, keep it loose. Work your way around all 10 of the screws and once they're all loosely in, go around and nip them all up. They're going into captured M3 nylon nuts so there's not much chance of stripping any threads but access to the screws under the axles is a little bit awkward, so watch out for stripping the heads. Step 24, and they call this one the suspension plate. I'm not entirely sure what it's got to do with suspension though, as it's the bit that triggers the leg retracts. There's a few screws required for this one, but since there's really not a lot left, we'll just take them out as we need them. The push rod is interesting too. It's the usual steel rod with the threaded ends, which I've attached two of the plastic ends. The interesting bit though, it's quite a bit longer than the one in the manual. Right, we need to build up the bit that triggers the retracts. So we need plastic parts C3 and C6. A brass coupler nut that sits on the top of C6. And an M3x8 that goes in through the inside of C3 to hold it together. It can be done up as tight as you like, as the clearances are built in. 
On the long arm of C6, we need to install a 5mm ball end. As usual, not done up all that tight, just enough that it's going to sit nice and snug on the plastic. Next we've got C1 that goes over the top of the arm to limit travel. It's held on with a 3x8 self tapper. Don't do it up all the way yet though, just take up the slack. Now we can simply attach it to the chassis. However, you might remember right at the beginning of the build I had that metal plate on backwards. Well, it still is. The hole at the front should be at the other end. No big deal though, just turn it around. But that plate doesn't have captured nuts, so undoing the four countersunk screws will be all but impossible. There is four holes in the aluminium floor that line up with them, but that's covered in the internal plastic sheet. So to fix it, I had to remove the ten screws holding the chassis on, remove the plate, spin it around and reassemble. A bit of a pain, but at least in the video we can just cut and have it the right way round. The little mechanism should fit this time, so we'll need an M3x25, an M3x20 and a 3x12 self-tapper. The short M3 goes in the back left hole, the long one on the right, and the self-tapper goes in the hole that now lines up with the hole in the metal plate. The two machine screws go into captured nylocks, so you won't strip them, but there's not really much advantage in doing them up super tight. They just need to be bottomed out, plus a little bit extra. The self-tapper goes into plastic, so making it nice and snug will do the job just fine. Just the linkage left, the rear end goes on that little shuttle thing and has the aluminium panel behind it, so we can just press the ball end straight down to engage. The other end is a bit more delicate, so we need to use some pliers to persuade it to clip together. There might be a bit of fiddling to do with the length of the rod, but for now it seems to work okay. If the truck struggles to latch on, we might need to shorten it a little, but we'll have to wait and see. OK, step 25, the bumper. On the bumper, there's a few bits that will get in the way when we paint it, like the number plate surrounds and the lenses, so we'll just skip them for now. They'll also need gluing on, so they really want to be one of the last bits we fit. For now, though, we can assemble all the big bits. For the screws, all we have are six 2x8 self-tappers and six 3x8 self-tappers. The bumper, H4, gets attached to the main bit with the lights, H3, with two of the 3mm self-tappers. Make sure the step is at the top. Next, the black boxes for the lights, L8 and L9, get screwed on with the 2mm self-tappers, three per side. Lastly, that assembly gets offered up to the back of the chassis where the square lump in the middle nicely locates in the back of the bumper, so lining it all up with the screw holes is really easy. So we just install the last of the 3x8 self-tappers, and we're done with the dry build. There's still quite a bit to do, mainly painting, before we can call it almost done, but it's far enough along we can take it outside and see what it looks like. The grand hauler is still using a 6L NICAD and an inline connector adapter. It's actually slightly ahead of where we left it in the videos, but not by much. However, it's the trailer we're looking at this time, so it'll do for now. Getting the truck to hook up and getting the legs to retract requires quite a good bump. Setting the pushrod length can help quite a bit, but I've noticed at the shows the trailers with the mechanical retract sometimes need a couple of bumps to get going. When it is attached though, it works a treat. There's no little hills in this car park, so I can't really test the maximum angles, but that's more to do with the truck end and the trailer. It tracks well, and the extra weight really gives a feeling of mass, not something you get with very many RCs unless you go up to 5th scale. The truck has a Ghoul RC 45 turn motor, which for running in an open area gives some nice speed without being silly, and it's still got plenty of torque. It takes a while to wind up in 3rd gear, but that's how it probably should be with all that weight. In first, it's very controllable when going slowly. It seems to be quite a good setup if you've got a little bit of space to cruise around. I'll upload this little clip of it running around separately too. It was recorded at 50 frames per second and this video is only 25. So if you want to see that and hear the mighty Chinese motor doing its thing, I'll stick a link in the description. For this week though, that's going to be it. So thanks for watching, like if you liked, subscribe if you want to know when the next video goes up, and of course if you've got something to say, leave a comment. Bye guys!